Alrighty, welcome back. In this video, I'll talk about absolute value inequalities. Let's get started. Uh, actually, before we get started, here are some buzzwords and perhaps a review from the previous video. When you're solving a compound inequality, if you have an or statement, you're asking yourself the question, where are we covered from the rain? So any part of the number line that's covered by uh, an interval or by the solution, that becomes part of the interval notation. With an AND statement, you're looking for where is there a sandwich, or S-A-N-D. Uh, and then you're looking for an overlap. The way we're going to be solving absolute value inequalities is by being given an inequality that has an absolute value in it. We're going to convert that to either an OR or an AND inequality compound inequality, and then solve that just the same way we solved the previous section. So here, the only thing extra that we're doing is adding a couple of steps to the start of the problem. Everything else is going to remain the same. So let's say we have, well, first, let me share some buzzwords. So these symbols on the top are called greater than or equal to or greater than. The way I remember this trick is if you think of the word great or. So greater instead of greater, if you said great or and emphasize the or, that means that anytime you have an absolute value inequality, so something like, let's say, 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to inside absolute value 6. This will split into a, com or this will get turned into a compound inequality with an or in the middle. If we have less than or equal to, or less than, then the way I remember this is less than. So it's almost like less than, but there's a D at the end. And if we have the same exact inequality, 4x minus 5 is less than 6, this will split into something and something, whereas the top one will split into something or something. So now let's talk, once we have that settled, let's talk about how the split occurs. So let's actually do both of these. We have 4x minus 5 is great or than or equal to or 6. So the first inequality will be the same exact thing you have in the problem without the absolute value bar. So you basically just copy it down and you just remove the absolute value bars. That is one inequality. The second one will be the same left-hand side, so the absolute value does not change. Oops. The absolute value side does not change, but you do make two changes here. You flip the direction of the inequality, and you make the other sign negative, so you make this negative 6. Now you might be saying, okay, so we created a compound inequality, but which word goes in the middle? That's where great or or less than comes in handy. So because this was a great or, we know that this is going to be turned into an or compound inequality. And that's really it. This is all the new stuff, because in the previous video, you should have learned how to solve that. Uh, for the right-hand side, we or for the bottom one, we have absolute value of 4x minus 5 is less than 6. So the first inequality will be exactly as it is. Nothing changes. 4x minus 5 is less than 6. And then the other one will be the same thing inside the absolute value, but we got to change the direction of the inequality, so greater than, and then change the 6 to a negative 6. Because this is a less than, or than, this will be an and compound inequality, and then we dealt with these in the previous section. So let's actually solve this just for practice. Uh, 4x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 6, so we add the 5 over to the other side. 6 plus 5 is 11, and then we divide both sides by 4. But since we're dividing both sides by a positive number, the inequality stays put. I don't have to change it. Here we add the 5 again, so negative 6 plus 5 will be negative 1. And then we're dividing both sides by 4. The inequality stays put. We can graph both these results on a single number line. 
So negative 1 fourth will be to the left of 11 fourth. Uh, x is greater than or equal to 11 over 4. So let's say we plug in 0. Is 0 greater than 11 over 4? No, 0 is uh, less than all the positive numbers. So we are being lied to by 0. So we will include that number and then run away from 0. Here we have x is less than or equal to negative 1 fourth. So we are including negative 1 fourth. But let's say we plug in 0 again as a test value. 0 is less than or equal to negative 1 fourth. Uh, and if this is giving you trouble, think always think about this in terms of money. Which would you rather have, 0 dollars or 11 over 4? If you would rather have 11 over 4, then that's larger. Which would you rather have, 0 or owe someone a quarter, 1 fourth? Well, you'd rather have no money than owe someone else money. So this side will be greater if you plug in 0, which means 0 is lying to us again. So we got to run away from it. Because this was an or compound inequality, I'm asking myself, where am I covered from the rain? I'm covered from the rain in this interval and under this umbrella. So my answer would be negative infinity to negative one fourth. Uh, oops, bracket. Union. Union, remember, is the mathematical glue. Uh, 11 over 4 to infinity. Here, so th that's that question. Question's over. Here we have similar, but it's less than instead of it being less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. But the procedure is still the same. We add the 5, so we get 4x is less than, sorry, uh, 11. 5 plus 6 is 11. Then we divide both sides by 4. So x is less than 11 over 4. And we have the and in the middle. Here again, we do the same thing. We add 5, so 4x will be greater than negative 1. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. And now we divide both sides by 4. So x is greater than negative 1 fourth. We can graph this result as well. So negative 1 fourth goes here. 11 over 4 goes here. So now we need to be less than 11 over 4. So 11 over 4 is not included, and we have to go to the left. So it, it, again, I know that I have to go to the left because I'm plugging in 0 as my test value. 0 is less than 11 over 4. That's a true statement. So that will go in this direction. Uh, then we have greater the x is greater than negative one fourth. Let's plug in zero again. Is zero greater than negative one fourth? Sure is. I'd rather have zero dollars than owe someone a quarter, so I'm going to go in the direction of the truth. Now here you'll see there is not an overlap at either endpoint because one of the holes is open. Uh, you don't have double coverage. You don't have something on top and on the bottom. So the interval for this would be open interval from negative 1 fourth to 11 fourth. That's where the overlap is. That is our answer. Let's do a couple more just to drive this home. In fact, I want to do the same one, but with a greater than. So 4x minus 5 is greater than 6. Uh, Actually, no. Let's do something else. Is less than negative 6. Let's solve this one. So we start by saying we're going to split this up into, an, uh, into a compound inequality. We know that it's going to be less than, so less than. It's going to be an and compound inequality. The first one will just be 4x minus 5 is less than negative 6. And the other one will be 4x minus 5. We change the direction of the inequality, and we change the sign. Now we just solve them as we normally do. So we add the 5, just like we have in the past. Negative 6 plus 5 will give us a negative 1. Then we divide both sides by 4, so that gives us negative 1 fourth. And, and, we add the 5 to the other side, so we get 4x is greater than 11. And then we divide both sides by 4, which gives us x is greater than 11 over 4. 
these numbers should look very familiar because we're using essentially the same problem as before. We're just tweaking it slightly. The, the six is becoming a negative. Uh, everything else is essentially the same. Now, if we graph the results here, we get negative one fourth, we get 11 over four. So X is less than negative one fourth. So if we plug in zero, zero will tell us a lie. That zero is not less than negative one fourth. So I'm going to start here and run away from zero. X is greater than 11 over four. So I'm going to start here. If I plug in zero again as my test value, zero is greater than 11 over four. Well, that's a lie. I'd rather have 11 over $4 than $0. So I'm going to run away from zero. Now you ask yourself, is this an and compound inequality or an or compound inequality? It's an and. So we're looking in particular for an overlap. The overlap is indicated by the word and. There is no overlap here. So the answer is no solution. There are no values of x that you'll be able to plug in here and get a true statement out of this inequality. It is not possible. No matter what you do, you won't be able to do it. There is one other caveat that you have to remember. Much like we did with radical equations and rational equations and all these other types of equations that we did on class last Sunday, we have the same condition here for absolute value inequalities as well. Before we create this compound inequality, we have to, have to, have to isolate the absolute value first. What I mean by that is if we have this equation, or inequality, 3 plus 4, the absolute value of 2x minus 7 uh, is less than or equal to, oh, I don't know, 11. I cannot go and split it right away because the absolute value is not by itself. The reason why we were able to split this right away, the absolute value is isolated. It's by itself on one side. Reason we were able to do both of these, absolute value is isolated. It's by itself on one side. Same thing with this example. However, with this problem, that's not the case. The absolute value is not by itself. So we first have to get it there. So if we subtract the three, we would be left with four times the absolute value of two X minus seven is less than or equal to 11 minus three would be eight. And now we can, excuse me, divide both sides by four. We don't have to flip the direction of the inequality because we're dividing by a positive number. So eight divided by four would give us two. Now that the absolute value is isolated, now we can ask ourselves: is this a great or or a less than? It's a less than or equal to, so it's going to split into an and compound inequality. The first one will be exactly the way you see it. The second one after an and statement will be 2x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So remember, you got to change the direction of the inequality, and then the sign of the number has to get flipped as well. And then you would solve this, solve this, graph your answer, and then read your graph using this word. If there is an overlap, that's your answer. If there is no overlap, then you say no solution. And that's it. So remember to isolate your absolute value. Once you have the absolute value isolated, you're asking yourself, is this a great or situation? Or is it a less than situation? And then everything we did in the past section applies. Uh, let me look at the homework, make sure everything here is covered. Cov ord, no pun intended. So we did that, we did that. We did that. Uh, the only example or the only variation I can think of is sometimes you might get something like this. Uh, with an or statement. Just because there's an overlap doesn't mean that it's an and. The question tells you how to interpret the graph. The graph doesn't tell you what the question should be. So if you get the graph on the left-hand side, and it's an or statement, here you're asking yourself, where are we covered from the rain? So you're covered from the rain everywhere. The rain might fall through here, but then you have the walkway above you. The rain is definitely not even getting here, 
and let's say you don't have an umbrella all the way in this region, it doesn't matter you're covered by the raincoat above you or, you know, there's a building above you that you're walking underneath. Uh, another common occurrence is something like this. The arrow is going the same direction. And let's put some numbers here. If this is an or statement, you're asking yourself, where are we covered from the rain? So if the rain's falling here, all over the number line, well, we're covered everything to the left of three, because that's the big line. And here we have double coverage. We're protected twice. Once we get to here, we maybe lose our umbrella. It gets blown away in the wind, but we still have our raincoat, so we don't get wet. So everything that is covered from the rain is from negative infinity to positive three. And three is included because there's a solid dot here. On the other hand, if this were an and statement, which is entirely possible, you're not asking yourself where you're covered, but where is the sandwich? So if it's an and statement, you're asking yourself where is the overlap? So the overlap exists all the way here, and then it stops at one, and one is not in the overlap because the top number or the top inequality is satisfied by one, the bottom one is not, there's a hole there. So here the and statement solution would be negative infinity to one and not including one because one is not where there's an overlap. So you can have many different orientations. The orientation does not tell you what the word should be in the problem. The word comes first, whether it's an and or an or, and the word tells you how to look at the picture, or you can look at the picture and ask different questions. The word tells you which question to ask. Hopefully that makes sense and helps. Uh, if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. Have a nice day.